Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome to Mojo Grip. So today we're going to talk about speed. Now I assume that if you're watching my channel, you're either interested in airplanes or cars. Either way, you like things that can go fast. And today we're going to talk about airplanes and their maximum speed. Okay, generally speaking, there's so many different types of airplanes out there, uh, different categories, you have tons of different models, um, but every single airplane has its own characteristics and every single airplane or class of air airplane uh, fly at a certain speed. But here's one thing that most people don't know. A lot of airplanes actually can go faster, faster than you're operating them, meaning um, just like in your car where you have like a max speed, you know, you have a top speed for cars. I um, mean, if you rev that engine to a certain point, you can't go any faster than that. You have that in an airplane too, but except in an airplane, before you even get to that top speed, you can still go faster than that. But the manufacturer tells you, hey, listen, I know the engine can go faster than up to this point, but you're not allowed to go to that number, all right? If that makes any sense. Now, I remember this is one of the things that I had to, that I was a little bit curious about when I first started flying. For example, when you think of a car, you have your zero to 60 speed or zero to 100 miles per hour, whatever have you, and then you have your top speed. But in an airplane, you have different types of speeds, okay? Um, and these are things that you learn as a student. You have your VNO, your VNE, uh, your VX, things like that. VX, uh, your best angle of climb. Uh, VY, your best rate of climb. And then you have VNO, your normal operating or cruising speed. And then your VNE is your never exceeding speed. Okay, but the speed that I want to talk about today is called your maneuvering speed. What's a maneuvering speed? Your maneuvering speed is the speed at which the maximum speed that you can operate in an airplane when you are in a turbulent environment. All right? All right, so let me try to break that down. So unlike a car, when you're flying an airplane, there are other things that you have to consider. You know, on the with the car, you're just literally stable on the ground for the most part. But when you're flying an object in the air, there are other things that would affect uh, your your journey or your uh, your traveling at that point. Because so when you're in the air, you have air pressure, you have wind, you have just certain things. If it's a hot day, your airplane might fly a little slower. If it's a cool day, your airplane might fly differently. If it's a day where it's windy or bumpy, obviously you're gonna feel all that effect. But that's what I mean. And all of these things will affect how your airplane performs, okay? Now, take the airplane that I learned in a Diamond DA-40. A Diamond DA-40, as I've said many times through my videos, your normal operating speed or cruise speed for that airplane is between 120, 130 miles per hour, or 120, 130 knots, okay? And just a, a, a tip here, knots is in nautical miles, one knot is equal to 1.15 miles per hour, if that makes any sense. Okay, so just a tip there. So if, I, if I'm referring to knots, if I say 120 knots, just multiply that by 1.15, okay? So the DA-40, for example, the normal operating or cruising speed is between 120 and 130 knots, okay? And then you have, say, your commercial Boeing jet that flies on average like 500 miles per hour and then you have like your military great airplanes like the f-16 and those suckers go north of a thousand miles per hour when you're flying there are things in the atmosphere that would affect the flight characteristics of the airplane air pressure wind uh temperature things like that all of those things would affect how fast you're going your maneuvering speed is recommended by the airplane manufacturer for this one main reason they don't want you to break the airplane, okay? So when you think of an airplane, all different airplanes are made with different materials. You have lighter airplanes now that are made from composite or carbon fiber material because these materials are generally thinner, lighter, but they're also stronger. And you have even big jets using more light but stronger materials uh, for all these 
different reason fuel efficiency your airplane is when when object is lighter in the air it travels faster it burns less gas things like that okay but even with all this extra extra measures the manufacturer still doesn't want you to break the airplane and here's the logic behind that so take for example if you're flying in a turbulent environment and by turbulent I mean moderate to severe turbulence and for example if you fly a lot during the summer uh, depending on where you are during the summer there's heat all right and heat always rises right heat rises because the air is thinner when it's cold when the temperature is cooler outside you have air pressure a little heavier so it doesn't rise as much but when there's heat the air is thinner and it, it's lighter it's fluffier so it rises and when that happens when air rises it bumps things here and there so if you fly a lot during the summer you have times where it's just a bumpy ride or if you fly around mountains a lot of that if you fly in California for example and you fly in certain places because there's a lot of mountains around you get bumps that's just how it is because the when you think of the ground the ground is not as level or as plain so you get bumps here's my favorite sample airplane my model here all right so in my recent video I've explained how a stall happens in an airplane all right the reason why this is an airplane and just like your uh, uh, real-life airplane this object is able to fly because you have air flowing over its wings all right and you have air pressure both at the top here and below and literally all over the, the airplane all right so with speed also comes more pressure if that makes any sense all right so if you're going really fast it also means that you have a lot of air pressure uh, hitting the body of the airplane and that's one of the reasons why your manufacturer will set a limit to how fast you can go because again the faster you're going the more pressure you're putting on this body and if you put too much pressure on this body you can damage it you can break the wings you can break just literally any parts of the airplane all right so again let's go back to a situation where you're in a turbulent air if you're in a turbulent air and you're again say you're cruising at 120 and the manufacturer tells you you have to slow down to 108 if you don't do that first of all when you think of turbulent air if you're getting if this airplane is doing this why you're flying around you're flying around and you're you're getting tough and that's happened I've had situations where the ride got so bumpy I was hitting my head on the uh, on the ceiling of the airplane so you may find yourself in situations like that where the it's a little rough air and even if you've taken commercial flights you've probably run, ran into some crazy turbulence that scared the crap out of you but a lot of times as a pilot you should know what to do okay so again back to the scenario your your this your airplane is doing this bumping around every time your airplane is getting hit the reason why your airplane is doing this is because it's getting hit all right and it means you have weight on the airplane on the body of the airplane so say some crazy turbulent air comes from this side and boom hits you right there or from the underneath goes boom hits you right there so you have already weight and pressure hitting the body of that airplane but if you continue to go fast again with speed also comes even more pressure so if you continue to go at the same speed that you were going it means you're also adding more weight and more pressure to the body of the airplane and again based on the material that the body of that airplane is built the manufacturer will tell you listen your airplane can take this much pressure if you add more than that you're gonna damage it so if you're getting tossed around and then you're also adding speed to that it means you never know this wing can just boom break off <laughs> or the your elevator or your empennage any parts of the airplane can just go boom but that's the general idea there the reason why a manufacturer would set a maneuvering speed is because they don't want you to break the airplane okay with speed comes pressure and in a turbulent environment you're being hit from different sides it means you're being hit with different pressure and so you need to reduce your speed so you have less pressure on the body of the airplane alright so I hope that makes sense for all of you guys if you've ever wondered 
I'm sure this is, may not be something you think about now, but this is part of flying an airplane. And when you start your journey as a pilot, these are speeds that you need to learn. And if you find yourself, again, in a turbulent situation, you should know what to do. Don't travel as fast as you were. You want to travel within the envelope of your maneuvering speed. If you go over that, you run the possibility of breaking that airplane. And we don't want to do that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Again, my name is Mike. Give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. I will catch you guys on the next video. Peace.